On the fourth day, the sun rose to us sleeping in our beds and the horses enjoying some well-deserved pasture time. My time to tag along though was coming to an end, so I tiptoed out and soaked up my last sunrise for the trip. As I explored the grounds, I decided that we couldn't have found a better place to tie over for a day if we tried. It was beautiful, it was peaceful, and it had some fascinating history. The ranch was originally founded by William C. Child. Child was a Wells Fargo Express agent who came to the Montana Territory in 1870. In 1885, he founded the ranch and began raising some of the first purebred Herefords in the territory. After the notoriously deadly winter of 1886, Child began construction on what would be the largest barn in Montana a record that it still holds to this day. It's three stories tall and was designed to hold 500 cattle and store 350 tons of hay. With its 70 windows and breathtaking fieldstone masonry, it really is a sight to behold. The nearby octagon house matches the barn with its stunning architecture and history. The Uns have been such a blessing to us letting us stay there a day. We wanted to pay them back in one way or another, so they had a few projects around there that they let us help out with and we all split up into groups. We got to help tear apart a old milk barn that had previously burned down. We help Mr. Young tile his shower. We we need it. The old dressing room. We mowed lawns. We also planted trees with Mr. Young. After helping out around the ranch, Mr. Young took us for another short tour of the house, which was also built in the 1800s. And he took us upstairs into the ballroom where Austin had been working on a centerpiece of cedar. We got to help unwrap that. pretty cool, they did a really good job and they uh, showed us also out on the balcony they've been working on a patio, so they're definitely really ambitious with their construction projects around there. I never poured concrete up in the middle of the air before. Before dinner we pulled the team out um, and took some time to give more rides and give a few people some driving lessons. <laughs> Everybody enjoyed going on the coach, teaching all the kids and youngs how to drive. Yeah, we had a we had a real blast. He's teaching it a few tricks. A friend of the Youngs had a BLM Mustang that they had been starting under saddle. Nobody had been on it yet. I always like putting the first rides on horses, so I asked if I could do that. Everybody wanted to see a show, but she had done such a good job with the groundwork, it turned out to be a pretty uneventful first ride on it, so it did really good. For me, one of 
of the neatest things was um, some of the guys brought Brian brought his banjo and there's some guitars and when we were at the Kleckner Ranch they invited some of their friends over and just had like a night of singing. It was it was really neat. So before the trip, that's one of the things I was looking forward to is making new friendships and meeting new people. The Youngs were pretty much that for me. You wish you were me. <laughs> it was pretty neat to make that connection and get to meet them and build some friendships there. And uh, I think it's something that will last for a lot of years. After the bonfire that night, it was time for me to wish the team farewell and Godspeed. The adventure had brought me lots of memories um, that I could look back on, and most of all, I was just looking forward to hearing the stories from the adventure as it continued. Even though we didn't gain any ground on day four, we made plenty of memories and friends to make up for it. With the horses well rested and fresh ice in the coolers, we were ready to cover some country the next morning. Day five, we got a late start that morning. It was sad leaving the Kleffner Ranch. It had been really good to us, made a lot of good friends there. Uh, the horses were, were all rested up and ready to go. So we hit the road. Must have been just as hard for them to say goodbye as it was for us. As Austin decided to come along. And then Carlos, a friend of his, I had another passenger along too. It was my mom. My most favorite part was riding in the coach. I think just because you could feel like you were back there in the day. My goal to be on the stage coach is possible today. You have fun? Yeah. Back, back yet? Sorry, I'm not getting that. Oh no! Sorry, not sorry. We all would have been getting a chance. You, you're gonna make it to North Dakota, South Dakota. <laughs> so, oh, he's pushing it even farther. And that's not hot yet. Shanae has left us, Charity and I, with an assignment of gathering different like life lessons from the different experiences that everyone had had on the trip. Always have good friends that you show you don't forget the things you lose. <laughs> <laughs> like you that that makes your mistakes. <laughs> John? Um, uh, I thought of it on my way over. Your way back from the pause. What does pause this? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I remember what it was. Something like this, you have to be able to be very flexible and with your bladder? As, as, yeah. As plans change, you need to be able to swap plans and adjust and recalculate and do all sorts of stuff and you have to not be afraid to step on a limb and do something you're not comfortable with and you have to really be all over the place. You just like <laughs> so at one of our breaks where we were switching out the horses, Yost just grabbed the curry comb and he kind of like stepped into the role of like reporter and started asking people different questions. Other than the semi truck, she says the best thing ever. Oh, the only main difference. Oh, John mentioned Roundup. Do you think that could be a key, key ingredient? <laughs> Although I think Roundup is a key ingredient in my cookie. Yeah, I ate a piece. I'm not going to eat the green part. <laughs> you have to try it. It tastes fine. Yeah, yeah. Not doing it. <laughs> Assistant here stuck her head out the top of the window and lost her hat. So the second time okay, we try so to get it. When, when's the next time you feel like you'll run into a train? Well, we actually ran into another one, um, and we sped down the highway trying to get it, but it drove past. Have you considered radioing them and having them slow down? That actually we did talk about that, but the next time we're going to run into a train is actually right up the river, so we're going to go ahead this time wait for the train, hopefully the stagecoach and the train meet at the same time. The river, that sounds like a good spot. Mm -hmm. why, why do you want the river? 
Um, because the train going, we're actually talking about this as well. They're, they could go over the train track bridge, and that would just be a beautiful picture, but a bad idea. <laughs> Do you think the train maybe moves quite a bit faster? Um, yeah, probably. We haven't really tried to go to race a train before on this trip, but it maybe this It probably wouldn't be good if they got hit by a train, though. Um, no, but we do have spare horses. <laughs> All right, that'll work. <laughs> Lawson ended up driving most of the way to Townsend. We took a two-track that went on the other side of the train tracks, and that was pretty cool. It was smooth and kind of private back there, and it felt like we were back in the day. And then we ran into a locked gate, and we couldn't get through, so we ended up having to get a running start and run up onto the train tracks, and I almost tipped the coach over and flew off, but making it through and that was a pretty good adventure. Austin and Carlos uh, kept saying well we're gonna have to leave the next stage stop but every stage stop they came to they said oh okay well we'll just go one more time. We definitely weren't upset at all about it we were enjoying the company so but eventually when we got to Townsend they did end up having to head back. It was sad to see them go but we were really glad they were able to come along for as long as they did. I have lots of stories, but one of the ones that stuck out, we were riding over the rough country, we were off the beaten track, <laughs> and uh, my sons got a little bit excited, decided to go a little faster, and we had a pretty big pothole, and my head went right into the rafter, <laughs> and uh, I yelled out there, hey, did you remember you had a passenger back here? <laughs> So that was pretty memorable, especially the headache. But <laughs> people back in the day must have been a lot tougher. <laughs> Travel by Stagecoach has never been praised for its comfort levels. In 1858, a New York Herald reporter wrote about his first experience on a stagecoach trip. He said they journeyed along the edge of the plane, thumping and bumping at a rate which threatened not to leave a whole bone in my body. He concluded that the day's ride was quite unpleasant. During the summer months, steamboats would join stagecoaches in transporting passengers across the state. The Missouri River was one of the major routes traveled. Often, steamboats and stagecoaches would work together. For many people traveling west, their first leg of the journey would be a long trip up the river, and the second half would be a bumpy ride in a stagecoach. join us for part of the trip to uh, see her horses in action. She ended up catching up with us outside of Townsend on Highway 12. Since we were on an uphill, we used the four up. This part of the Highway 12 through there um, is a bit steeper and it's fairly narrow and windy and it got to showcase how well they were doing. steep and hot so by the time we got to the top of that hill people needed breaks about as much as the horses. Over a few days you just make friendships and you have experiences with the people around you and you laugh together and you have hard times together too. And so all of this kind of just came crashing down on me as we're pulling up to the last, to where the horses are gonna switch out and Charity and I know that we have to turn around. And I'm like, what do I say to these people? Like, what? how can I say thank you? And that this was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. And so the tears started to flow as I said goodbye. Tag along. Um, so, yeah, 
saying goodbye was hard because I felt like I was abandoning the team and just had to turn around and just, I hate abandoning people. <laughs> so that was hard. Yeah. And also like, we felt like we were missing out on the next few days ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Don't seem right. You guys not going across North Dakota, you know? Oh, no. Yeah, it's messed up. <laughs> Get that on video. Two there goes supper. Brooke and Charity were a major part of the kitchen crew. And besides that, when you're on a trip like this, people become a lot like family very quickly. So it was hard to see them go. So day five, we hadn't really made any plans where we were going to stop exactly. So as it started getting later, starting to get dark, we ended up we hoping to find some state land, but there didn't seem to be anything close by. So we stopped and asked a rancher along the way. He was kind enough to let us pull over and set up our pens at the end of his driveway there. So it worked out pretty good. We had some fences to work our pen off of and give the horse a little more room to lay down and stuff. Day five, we made 80 miles. Um, it was a pretty exciting day getting going, but throughout the day, people had to needed to head back home, so it was there's a lot less of us that evening, so it felt a little different. But we still had the determination we we're going to make it across the state. <laughs> 